start recording. Welcome to Astronomy 103. This discussion is on powers of 10. Why do we discuss power of 10s? Well, in astronomy, we deal with large numbers frequently, and we need a convenient way of expressing large numbers. There are many ways to think of basically how large numbers can be large. So for instance, you could think about how much sand is there on planet Earth? Is there a way to come up with it? Is it infinite? If you think it's infinite, you're not alone. There was some one a king at one point who thought, in fact, the number of sand particles is infinite in the in the in the world. And by sand, it doesn't mean just the sand that exists around his local area, or the rest of his or the rest of his no, known area, or the rest of his kingdom, but also basically every region possible in the world, whether there are people there or not. And so, thinking that is infinite. Uh, or thinking there was no number that could be that could be written to express how big this number was, right? Um, a a Greek philosopher at the time, Archimedes, decided that there was a way to prove, in fact, a way of counting or estimating the amount of sand there was in the world. And in fact, that number was not infinite, but was a way that you could write it down. And in order to do this, you have to basically use something powerful, powers of ten. All right, so let's discuss how powers of 10 work. Very simply, powers of 10 involve the number 10. So for instance, uh, so this one is 10, right, to the one, right? That means there's just one 10. There's no other thing 10 that's multiplying it. So the other way to think about it is this, this one refers to the number of zeros after the one. So for instance, there's a one zero after the one. So in that case, there is just basically the number 10. Now, you go go, Further, 10 to the 2 means, that, in fact, there are basically two zeros after the 1, all right? And so this is 10 times 10. The other way to think about it is that 10 to the 1 refers to the decimal places that need to be moved over in order to basically express the number. So, for instance, there's a decimal place here. You move over 1, and there it is, 10. In this case, you move the decimal place twice, 1, 2, and that's 100, all right? So there are many ways, many ways different ways. Number, number 10 to Put together, 10 times 10, there are two tens multiplied times each other. Number zeros, 1, 2, or no decimal places need to move, 1, 2. Right. Now 10 to 3 is just 10 to 10 times 10 times 10, basically three tens in a row, all multiplied together. It's 1,000, three zeros, 1, 2, 3, or three decimal places move to 1, 2, 3. Three decimal places to the right, and so on. This is a million, 10 to 6. 10 sixes, all six tens, all uh, written together, all multiplied times either. Six zeros after the one, or six decimal places. One, two, three, four, five, and six. So why is these numbers very useful? Why is this nomenclature so useful? Well, this nomenclature allows you to do multiplication and division very, very rapidly. We don't have to multiply and divide large numbers anymore. We just need to add and subtract small numbers. So what do I mean by that? Here's an example of multiplication. All right? Suppose you have 10 to the 2 times 10 to the 3. Well, what is 10 to the 2? 10 to the 2 is just 10 times 10. 10 to the 3 is just 10 times 10 times 10. So let's count. This gives me, say, 10, 5 tens, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 5 tens in a row. So that's 10 to the 5. Another way of thinking about it, Right, which makes this so powerful is that 10 to 10, 10 to the 2 times 10 to the 3 is really 10 to the 2 plus 3, which is 5. So that makes it very simple. You can multiply numbers very rapidly with this. This is 100 times 1,000, that's 100,000, right? 10 to the 2 times 10 to the 3, it's just 2 plus 3, 5, right? Which one is easier? Uh, clearly, basically, addition of small numbers is, you, is much easier than, than multiplication of large numbers. Here's another example. 10 to the 11, right, which is basically 100 billion times 10 to the 5, 100,000. What's 100 billion times 100,000? A lot, right? But how much? Well, it's just going to be 11 plus 5 or 10 to the 16. So simple. Now, you can use this with basic numbers in front of these things as well. So, for instance, 2 times 10 to the 5, that's 2 times 10 fives, in the, 10 fives, 5 tens in a row, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, which is 200,000 times 3 times 10 to the 5. 300,000. What's that number? 
200,000 times 300,000 or 2 times 10 to the 5 times 3 times 10 to the 5. Well, that's pretty simple. 10 times 10 to the 5 times 10 to the 5, that's 10 to the 10 or 10 to the 5 plus 5. 2 times 3 is 6, a rather simple number. We can also do division here. Right Here's another example. We have basically 10 to the 2 divided by 10 to the 3. What's 10 to the 2? 10 to the 2 is 10 times 10. 10 to the 3 is 10 times 10 times 10. So 100 divided by 1,000, well, that's 1 tenth, or 10 to the minus 1. Right? So this is the first encounter we have with 10 to the minus 1. Minus signs might refer to the number of zero, number of decimals you have to move over to the left. So for instance, in this case, I moved the 0, 1 point to the left. It's 0 0.1, same as a tenth or so. Okay, now 10 to 2 times 10 to 3, to divide by 10 to 3, another way to think about it is just going to be 2 minus 3 or 10 to the minus 1. So 2 minus 3 is 10 to the minus 1 or 0 0.1. And so you could do division very sim in the same way you could do multiplication. You multiply the numbers in front together or divide the numbers in front together and then you deal with the division of the powers of 10 separately. So for instance, 6 times 10 to the 3, 6,000, divided by 3 times 10 to the 10, 3 times 10 to the 1, really, that's 30. So 6,000 divided by 30, what's that? Well, that's 6 divided by 3. I'm going to divide the numbers together first. 10 to 3 divided by 10 to the 1. So 10 to 3 divided by that is 10 to the 3 minus 1, or 2. 6 divided by 3, that's 2, or 200, or 2 times 10 to 2. This is the preferred way of writing it because it's very simple. You can interpret it very easily. But you need to be able to convert between this thing and this thing. Right? A slightly more complicated example is the following. This is 2.1 2 times 10 to 2, which is uh, 210. Divide by 7 times 10 to the 3, that's 7,000. How, how do we do that one? Well, that's 2.1 divided by 7. And 10 to the 2 divided by 10 to the 3. So this is going to be 2.1 divided by 7 is 0.3 times 2 minus 3, 10 to the minus 1. So it's 0.3 times 10 to the minus 1. 0.3 can also be written as 3 times 10 to the minus 1 times 10 to the minus 1. So that you got minus 1 plus minus 1 is minus 2, 10 to the minus 2. 3 times 10 to the minus 2, or 0 0.03. Okay, so in a second, let's basically take a, a, a hiatus, and now let's go take some real practice of this. Okay, so let's see if this works now. Let's go turn on the video capture device, and here we go. So let's do some simple multiplication and some division. All right, so let me suppose I have, I got to lock my autofocus. Uh, let me lock my autofocus first. There we go. It's uh, hopefully it's sharp enough. Okay, so. Let me do 10. Ah, maybe a different pen would be better for this one. 10 to the 5 divided by 10 to the 3. Okay. Whoops, I should show you what that is. This is going to be equal to 10 to the 5 minus 3, which is 10 to the 2. Let's multiply this then. 10 to the 5 times 10 to the 3. That's going to be equal to 10 to the 5 plus 3. That's 10 to the 8. Okay. Now let's try with some numbers out in front because that makes things a little more challenging. All right. Uh, now we're going to do basically some simple numbers because that's what we're going to deal with. 4 times 10 to the 3 times, and I won't do 8, I'll do basically 2 times 10 to the 10, okay, 4,000 times basically um, 20 mil billion, right? This is going to be 4 times 2, multiply the numbers together, times, multiply the powers of 10 together, 10 to the 3 times 10 to the 10. Okay, so this is 10 to the 3 times 10 to the 10. This is going to be equal times 10 to the 3 plus 10. We know what that is. That's 10 to the 13. 13. And 
4 times 2, I hope you know what that is, that's 8. So let's get 8 times 10 to the 13. Very simple. Now, the math for this class is going to be fairly limited. I'm always going to give you numbers that can be easily multiplied and divided by. Right? So for instance, be 4 times 2, or basically 1 times 1, in this case, 1 divided by 1, or 1 times 1 here. Okay? Um, and so basically, you just need to be able to multiply small numbers together. Numbers that don't give you values typically greater than 10. All right? Okay? Or values less than 1, typically. Okay. So let's do some other example. Sorry, so this is another example of basically multiplication. Let's do an example of division. Okay? So I'm going to basically do, um, uh, let's try uh, uh, 6 times... 10 to the 20. Okay, so I was talking about big numbers now. Divide by 3 times 10 to the 25. Okay, so let's do this. So 6 divided by 3 times now 10 to the 20 divided by 10 to the 25. Okay, so let's basically do this carefully. This first number is 6 divided by 3 is a 2 times. 10 to the 20 minus 25, 2 times 10 to the minus 5. Okay? Very, very simple. All right? I won't do the complicated example like we just discussed in the lecture where we had 2.1 divided by 7. And the reason why is that 2.1 divided by 7 is 21 divided by 7 times 10 to the minus 1. Right, which makes things a little more complex. I don't want to basically mutter things too much, right? So this is the amount of typical math that you need to know. Basically adding and subtracting small numbers, numbers that basically you don't have to carry decimal places around or anything else like that, right? Basically decimal places will be concentrate in um, uh, the powers of 10 notation. Okay, let's go back now to um, the uh, lecture. All right, so what's next? Let's talk about basically how we measure things, all right? So when we use ways of measuring length, okay? Um, first of all, we don't use the Englishism. Inches, feet, uh, miles, pounds. And the reason why we don't use the English system is that it's kind of crazy if you think about it, right? So, for instance, 12 inches in a foot, 5,280 whatever feet in a mile, right? Hard stuff to deal with, okay? We like to deal with stuff on the metric system, and even then, basically, there will be some modification for this. What do I, what I mean by this? So, the first thing is that, like, you can think of, basically, a small unit measure as a centimeter, right? Uh, typically, if you grew up in Europe, for instance, your height is measured in centimeters, right? So you might be like a few, like 170 centimeters or 200 um, centimeters if you're basically over, I think, 6'3", 6 6'4", or so, okay? Um, but in this case, basically, for measuring human-sized things, we might use centimeters, Okay. For measuring larger things, we might use a kilometer for so. A kilometer would be a thousand meters or so, or 0.62 miles, right? So already, basically, what's nice about this is that centimeters is 10 to the minus 2 meters, or so 1 one hundredth meter, going to kilometer is a thousand meters. Everything's in powers of 10 notation. Fantastic, all right? Now, even then, it's always not that convenient, all right? We will use another convenient unit as well, though this is going to be used haphazardly. 1 AU. AU stands for astronomical unit, which is 1.5 times 10 to the 8 kilometers, all right, which is about 150 million kilometers. And this basically is the average distance from the Earth to the Sun. Right? So this is basically one way of measuring a distance. Right? This is measured in some standard unit, which is the distance of the Earth to the Sun, basically typical sizes of solar systems are can measure in AU to hundreds of AUs or so. Right? You can also use distance based on how far light travels, right? So this turns out to be something useful. It turns out the speed of light is really fast, though not infinite, 
the speed of light travels 300,000 kilometers in a second, right? Uh, which is 186,000 miles per second or so, not per hour, but per second, right? And so basically what you can ask is like, if you want to get distance, this is a speed. If you multiply it by some time, then you get distance, right? So what should that time be? So it turns out that this converging between these uh, different units in the metric system becomes extraordinarily simple, right? So for instance, as I mentioned before, a centimeter is basically 1 100th of a meter, 0 0.01 meters, or 10 to the minus 2 meters. A kilometer is 10 to the 3 meters. So you can ask basically how many meters are in 10 to 3 centimeters, 10 to 3 kilo kilometers, or 10 to the minus 2 kilometers, right? So basically in order to do that, let's just see if we show that. We don't, okay? So let's basically go to the videotape. All right, so let's go and um, take a look at this really quickly. All right, so we want to ask ourselves basically how many meters, whoops, wrong pen. Um, how many meters in, okay, 10 to the 3 centimeters, 10 to the 3 kilometers, and 10 to the minus 2 kilometers. Okay, so we got to keep thinking in mind, centimeters is equal to 10 to the minus 2 meters, kilometers is equal to 10 to the 3 meters, right? So with this piece of knowledge and the powers of 10 notation we just learned about, we can figure this out. So 10 to 3 centimeters, that's basically 10 to the 3 centimeters, which is equal to 10 to the 3, 10 to the minus 2 meters, right? Because that's what a centimeter is. So it's going to be equal to 10 to the 3 times 10 to the minus 2 meters is basically 10 to the 3 minus 2, right? So it's plus minus 2 meters, which is 10 to the 1 meters. So this is simply equal to 10 meters. Pretty simple, okay? Or 10 to 1 meters. Either answer is acceptable. Second thing, let's try this. 10 to 3 kilometers. Well, you can see how this works. This is 10 to the 3. And now 10 to 3, a kilometer is 10 to 3 meters, so that's 10 to 3 meters. So it's going to be 10 to 3 times 10 to 3 meters. So it's 10 to 3 plus 3, which is 10 to 6 meters, or basically a million meters or so. All right. I'm going to leave it up to you to do the last one, which is 10 to the minus 2 kilometers. Okay, let's go back here now, and we are, okay, so what's next, right? So let's talk about a little bit about um, uh, distance, right? Um, right, so distance is basically some speed times some time, right? Because speed is basically a distance over time, multiplied by time, you get distance, right? Okay, so for instance, if I drive 60 miles per hour for one hour, I travel 60 miles. That's the definition of miles per hour, right? How many miles I go if I drive, drive at one at for one hour? Now, if I drive 75 miles per hour and I drive over two hours, in the first hour I drive 75, in the second mile I drive 75 miles. So 75 plus 75 is 150 miles, or 75 times two is 150 miles. Okay. So, for instance, basically we might move. Um, the Earth moves at a very rapid clip, much faster than you would think. The Earth moves at 30 kilometers a second around the Sun. So the question is, how far does it travel in 1 second, 10 seconds, 10 to 4 seconds, 5,000 seconds, or 1 year? How would we go around this um, this question, right? So in order to do this, right, we have to know a few things, right? First thing, we have to know basically what a year is. So a year is roughly... 365 days, right? So it turns out that if you multiply this together, um, you will have basically, oh wait, hold on, what's going on here? Um, all right, so let's basically go back and do this first, right? We'll do a, f a few of them first just to understand how this works. Okay, so let's go to the screen capture device. We got, here we go. 
And um, let's do this then. Um, right. Okay. So let's basically look at. So we know Earth moves at. Whoops! I should put it down. Thirty kilometers per second. Okay. And I need to know basically how far it travels in D in one second, 10 seconds, 10 to the four seconds, all right? Um, and I'm going to skip to 5,000. I'm going to go to straight to one year, okay? All right, so in order to do this, um, let's go ahead and take a look what this is. So this is going to be equal to... Um, so let's try this one first. So, so for one second, d is equal to the velocity times time or the speed times time. Okay, speed times time. The time is one second. The speed is 30 kilometers per second. So it's going to be equal to for the first one, 30 kilometers per second times the time, one second, which is 30 kilometers. So Earth moves pretty fast, right? 30 kilometers is not a small amount. 30 kilometers is about, what, um, 18 miles, all right? So it's basically, Earth moves basically a distance from um, uh, Milwaukee to, I think, Delafield or something like that in about a second, all right? Pretty quick. All right, next one. We're going to look at basically the next one, which is 10 seconds, all right? So this can be D is equal to 30 times 10. That's 300 kilometers, right? 300 kilometers is about um, 180 miles. That's double the distance to um, Chicago, right? Um, in fact, I think it's like almost the distance to Urbana-Champaign. So in 10 seconds, the Earth moves the distance from Milwaukee to Urbana-Champaign. Uh, I'm not sure if anyone wants to go to Urbana Champagne, but um, that's how far it moves. Okay, so the next one we're going to do, another simple one, is 10 to 4 seconds. Okay, so this is this one. All right, so this is, let, me, let me make sure we don't have that then. D is equal to 30 times 10 to the 4. Okay, so let's convert this to some, make something simple. This is 3 times 10 to the 1 times 10 to the 4. Now you can see why power 10 notation is useful. This is 3 times 10 to the 1 plus 4. That's 3 times 10 to the 5 kilometers, right? 3 times 10 to the 5 kilometers is about 186,000 miles, which is, what is that? That's um, 7 times around the Earth or so, right? So over a period of basically 10 to 4 seconds, um, it moves, which is about 3 hours or so. It moves 7 times the distance around the Earth. Okay, now we're left with basically one last thing. One year. Okay, and so this is the thing that becomes um, much iffier. So you can't multiply d is equal to 30 kilometers per second times one year. Doesn't make sense, right? Because we need to convert the amount of seconds in a year in order to make this work. Okay, so we need to know what that conversion is. How many seconds are in a year? Let's go ahead and figure this out. So, how many seconds in a year? Well, this is going to be something simple. So, how many, first of all, how many, in order to figure it out, let's see, how many seconds, how many, days in a year. Well, one year is 365 days. Hopefully you guys know this. It's actually 365.24, but we're not going to worry about 0.24. How many hours in a day? Well, that's 24 hours. How many minutes an hour? Well, that's 60 minutes. And how many minutes, seconds in a minute? Times 60. All right, so now 365 times 24 times 60 times 60, that's going to be the number of seconds in a year. All right, now I don't have my calculator handy with me. Fortunately, I have my computer with me. So I'm going to basically show what that looks like. So turn off screen capture. Whoops, uh, wrong one. Turn off screen capture. And 
because I don't have a calculator. I'm going to show something pretty neat. Okay. Um, maybe we'll go full screen for this one. Okay. All right. This is a, um, well, you, some of you have a Mac, some of you have a Windows. But anyway, this is my handy dandy computer calculator. So, 365 times 24, whoops, whoops, times 24, times 60, times 60. So this is the number of seconds in a year, and you get something horrible looking, all right? But if you just count the number of zeros here, this is going to be number of decimal places, one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So this turns out to be, let's um, go back to the videotape here. So uh, where am I? There we go. Let's turn back screen capture here. So we got three point, it's 3.15 times 10. There were seven decimal places, seven, right? So 3.15 times 10 to the seven seconds in one year. And so we can use this to do the cal calculation. D is equal to, uh, from this above, 30 kilometers per second times 3.15 times 10 to the seven. So beautiful now. So now we use this three times 10 to the one times 3.15 times 10 to the 7. Okay, multiply the numbers together. This is 3 times 3.15 times 10 to the 1 times 10 to the 7. Okay, so now this one's easy. 3 times 3.15 is 9.45, right? So 3 times 15 is 45, so 0.15 is 0.45 times 10 to the 1 plus 7 is 10 to the 8. Look at that. 10 to 8 kilometers, right? Beautiful. Okay. Uh, you will never be asked to do this sort of calculation on an exam and whatnot, but it's just useful to see this used in, um, not real life, but used in, for something useful. Okay. Let's go back to the, uh, whoops, I got to close the window. Bye. Okay. Let's go back to this thing here. Start from current slide. <coughs> now, uh, in the notes I have 3.16. I just calculate 3.15, 3.15, 3.16, doesn't really matter, okay. Uh, and again, they got something very similar. Wait, what is that? Oh, right, this is um, light speed, okay. So let's do this carefully. So for to figure out a light year, all right, a light year is going to be the speed of light times the time. So the time is one year. The speed is 300,000 kilometers per second, not 30 kilometers per second, right? And so the distance you get is something that is much bigger. Um, in fact, I think it might be useful to show this calculation more in on paper instead. Okay, so let's do this. Let's go back to here. So we just calculated what a year is in seconds, 3.15 times 10 to 7. So the velocity C for speed of light, that's what you use for speed of light, is 300,000 kilometers per second, which is 3 times 10 to the 5 kilometers per second. See, it turns, this beautiful science, this tower of the 10 notation turns every large number into essentially the same operation as small numbers. Okay, so let's basically look this the light, uh, the light year, so one light year, I'll call it light year like that, is equal to basically C times T, which is 3 times 10 to the 5 times, basically 3.15 times 10 to the 7. And so you can calculate this number again. It's basically 9.45, right? 3 times 3.15 times. 10 to the 5 plus 7, so basically 9.45 times 10 to the 12. All right, uh, kilometers. That's basically one light year. It's roughly about 9.45 trillion kilometers. Okay, 
let's go back to the let's turn this off now um and whoops turn this off now and let's go back to our current um discussion right so one light year is written in this case is 0.9 times 10 to 13 or i've written it as 9.4 high times 10 to 12 if you just drop the two estimate that up that's 9 times 10 to 12 so both answers are the same okay so this is basically another check of the same thing they got they got instead of basically uh three times th three times uh 3.1 3.15, 3.16, doesn't really matter just at this level. Basically, it's going to be 9 times 10 to the 12 kilometers a second, or this written this way, it's 0.9 times 10 to the 13 kilometers, right? Okay, so even though light year has the word year in it, it's actually not a distance. It's, it's not a time, it's a distance, all right? Um, uh, it should be called maybe speed of light year. I mean, that would be easier then because speed of light, speed is distance divided by time. And so speed of light year would be basically a distance then. All right, but it's called light year, so that's a light year, right? That's just life. And roughly speaking, it's about 10 to 13 kilometers, right? Which is 9.45 times 10 to 12 kilometers, roughly 10 to 13. Basically, it's saying 9.45 is roughly 10. Okay, so you can basically do the geography of the universe using these sorts of systems, right? Uh, we can go from basically kilometers on one side, okay, or meters, all the way up to basically light year, right? And so we can span the geography of the universe using our powers of 10 notation. So notice we go from something fairly modest, 10 to minus 2 kilometers, which is 10 meters, roughly the size of a lecture hall or so, right? About 30 feet, right? Going all the way up to 10 to 10 light years, which is the size of the visible universe. Okay, so let's basically see how this power of 10 stuff works. Right, so let's start with 10 meters. 10 meters might be the size of a lecture hall if you actually go to a not an online class, right? Roughly size of lecture hall. Um, 10 meters might also be like the size of the, the house that you live in, the, the, the height of the house, for instance. Okay. Uh, at one kilometer, which is 10 to 3 meters, then you deal with the UWM campus, roughly basically 10 kil one kilometer, is roughly the size of a few city blocks or so, right? Roughly 10 ish city blocks. Okay. Going to 100 kilometers, right? Now that you're talking about basically the distances close to Chicago or seen, it's basically size of geographical distances on the map or so, okay? And then if you go to basically 10 to 4 kilometers, you get to something much larger, roughly about something about the diameter of the Earth or so, okay? Now, if you go to basically 10 to 6 kilometers or 3 3 divided by 4, 0. 0.75 times the 6 kilometers. Now you get the diameter of the moon's orbit around the Earth. Okay? Zooming out by another factor of 100 or 10 to the 2, now we basically start thinking about distances or size of the solar system. Roughly, the distance from the Earth to the Sun is 1.5 times 10 to 8. So at 10 to 8 kilometers, roughly we're talking about is the distance between the Sun and the Earth. At basically a factor of 100 larger, now we basically are talking about the distance to the outer planets, Neptune slash Pluto, right? And so we're looking at the diameter or the size of our solar system. Now, interesting, if you go back another factor of 100, nothing happens. Basically, uh, the distance between stars is much, much larger than the typical size of the solar system and whatnot. And so basically, it's just empty. Nothing happens. You have to go another factor of 10, Right to hit a light year, and at one light year, now you're talking about basically distances between stars. So, for instance, the closest star to the Earth, besides the Sun, is a star called Alpha uh, Proxima Centauri, which is in the Centauri system, Alpha Centauri, Beta Centauri, Proxima Centauri, All right. <clears throat> and that's about four light years away. At a hundred light years away, that's roughly the distance to the Pleiades, right, which is a bright uh, collection of stars that you see in the summer sky, all right. Blue stars, very young systems, right, um, so they tend to look blue. And those, the Pleiades is about 400 light years away, so basically about 10 to 2 or 100 light years, this is roughly the distances to some of our closer stellar neighbors, not the closest stellar neighbors. At 10 to 4 light years, now you're talking about basically the distances from 
uh, basically the size of the galaxy. So for instance, the distance that Milky Way is roughly three times ten to the four light years, three hundred thousand light years or so. All right, and so that's basically the distances uh, or to the center of the galaxy. At ten to six light years, a hundred times larger. Now we're talking about this distance between galaxies, right? So, for instance, the distance in drama clouds is basically 2 million light years, which is roughly on the scale of about a million or 10 to 6 light years. Zooming out some more at 10 to 8 light years, now we're talking about basically uh, distances between large collections of galaxies. So, for instance, our galaxy sits with the Andromeda galaxy in a, something, in a structure known as a local group, right? So, basically, it's us the Milky Way, Andromeda, and then a bunch of tiny dwarf galaxies are flying around that makes up a local group. At basically uh, 10 to 8 light years, then you talk about basically clusters of galaxies. So this is, this is a Virgo cluster, which is a collection of very large galaxies. Each galaxy at least the size of the Milky Way, and some of them much, much larger. At 10 to 10 light years, right, this is the amount, the amount of time this is the distance the light travels in 10 billion years, which is roughly the Asian universe. To basically light, it took light almost the entire Asian universe to reach us. This is the size of the visible universe, right? So light can't travel from distances which are further away than, where, than the amount of time it, had to, it took to travel here. Right? So this is the size of the visible universe. And the furthest observed systems that we can see typically are quasars or extremely distant galaxies. Okay, so to end with this, we'll basically show an ancient, ancient clip of the powers of 10, which is produced by um, some brothers way back in the day. Near the lakeside in Chicago is the start of a lazy afternoon, early 1 October. We begin with a scene one meter wide, which we view from just one meter away. Now every 10 seconds we will look from 10 times farther away, and our field of view will be 10 times wider. This square is 10 meters wide, and in 10 seconds the next square will be 10 times as wide. Our picture will center on the picnickers, even after they've been lost to sight. 100 meters wide. The distance a man can run in 10 seconds. Cars crowd the highway. Power boats lie at their docks. The colorful bleachers are soldiers' field. This square is a kilometer wide, 1,000 meters. The distance a racing car can travel in 10 seconds. We see the great city on the lake shore. 10 to the fourth meters, 10 kilometers. The distance a supersonic airplane can travel in 10 seconds. We see first the rounded end of Lake Michigan, then the whole great lake, 10 to the fifth meters. The distance an orbiting satellite covers in 10 seconds. Long parades of clouds. The day's weather in the Middle West. 10 to the 6th, a 1 with 6 zeros, a million meters. Soon the Earth will show as a solid sphere. We are able to see the whole Earth now, just over a minute along the journey. The Earth diminishes into the distance, but those background stars are so much farther away that they do not yet appear to move. A line extends at the true speed of light. In one second, it half crosses the tilted orbit of the moon. Now we mark a small part of the path in which the Earth moves about the sun. Now the orbital paths of the neighbor planets, Venus and Mars, then Mercury. Entering our field of view is the glowing center of our solar system, the sun. Followed by the massive outer planets, swinging wide in their big orbits. That odd orbit belongs to Pluto. A fringe of a myriad comets too faint to see completes the solar system.
10 to the 14th. As the solar system shrinks to one bright point in the distance, our sun is plainly now only one among the stars. Looking back from here, we note four southern constellations, still much as they appear from the far side of the Earth. This square is 10 to the 16th meters, one light year, not yet out to the next star. Our last 10 second step took us 10 light years further. The next will be 100. Our perspective changes so much in each step now that even the background stars will appear to converge. At last, we pass the bright star Arcturus and some stars of the Dipper. Normal but quite unfamiliar stars and clouds of gas surround us as we traverse the Milky Way galaxy. Giant steps carry us into the outskirts of the galaxy. And as we pull away, we begin to see the great flat spiral facing us. The time and path we chose to leave Chicago has brought us out of the galaxy along a course nearly perpendicular to its disk. The two little satellite galaxies of our own are the clouds of Magellan. 10 to the 22nd power, a million light years. Groups of galaxies bring a new level of structure to the scene. Glowing points are no longer single stars, but whole galaxies of stars seen as one. We pass the big Virgo cluster of galaxies among many others, a hundred million light years out. As we approach the limit of our vision, we pause to start back home. This lonely scene, the galaxies like dust, is what most of space looks like. This emptiness is normal. The richness of our own neighborhood is the exception. The trip back to the picnic on the lakefront will be a sped up version, reducing the distance to the Earth's surface by one power of ten every two seconds. In each two seconds, we will appear to cover 90% of the remaining distance back to Earth. Notice the alternation between great activity and relative inactivity, a rhythm that will continue all the way into our next goal, a proton in the nucleus of a carbon atom beneath the skin on the hand of the sleeping man at the picnic. Ten to the ninth meters, ten to the eighth, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. We are back at our starting point. We slow up at one meter, ten to the zero power. Now we reduce the distance to our final destination by 90% every 10 seconds, each step much smaller than the one before. At 10 to the minus 2, 1 one hundredth of a meter, 1 centimeter, we approach the surface of the hand. In a few seconds, we'll be entering the skin crossing layer after layer from the outermost dead cells into a tiny blood vessel within. Skin layers vanish in turn. An outer layer of cells, felty collagen. The capillary containing red blood cells and a roughly lymphocyte. We enter the white cell. Among its vital organelles, the porous wall of the cell nucleus appears. The nucleus within holds the heredity of the man in the coiled coils of DNA. As we close in, we come to the double helix itself, a molecule like a long twisted ladder whose rungs of paired bases spell out twice in an alphabet of four letters the words of the powerful genetic message. At the atomic scale, the interplay of form and motion becomes more visible. We focus on one commonplace group of three hydrogen atoms bonded by electrical forces to a carbon atom. Four electrons make up the outer shell of the carbon itself. They appear in quantum motion as a swarm of shimmering points. At 10 to the minus 10 meters, one angstrom, we find ourselves right among those outer electrons. Now we come upon the two inner electrons held in a tighter swarm. As we draw toward the atom's attracting center, we enter upon a vast inner space At last, the carbon nucleus, so massive and so small. This carbon nucleus is made up of six protons and six neutrons. 
we are in the domain of universal modules. There are protons and neutrons in every nucleus, electrons in every atom, atoms bonded into every molecule out to the farthest galaxy. As a single proton fills our scene, we reach the edge of present understanding. Are these some quarks in intense interaction? Our journey has taken us through 40 powers of 10. If now the field is one unit, then when we saw many clusters of galaxies together, it was 10 to the 40th, or 1 and 40 zeros.